Welcome back. Now, last week on Auction Day, we had five out of six auctions passed in. But you saw here on the show, and it uh, wasn't really the full picture. That's right. Post-auction, four of those five properties have been sold. Some of them moments after the auction wrapped up. To help us get to the bottom of why a passed-in auction still helps sell a property fast, we're joined by buyer's agent Veronica Morgan of Good Deeds and Ray White auctioneer Paul Mink. Um, Veronica and, Mo and Paul, thank you for both Good for being here. Lovely to be here. Look, we, we felt a bit deflated last week, sitting here watching we passed in, passed in, passed in. We watched, you know, five out of six went that way. Yeah. Um, but as an auctioneer on the ground, yeah. what are we not seeing when we're seeing it from the comfort of our studio or our living rooms? Well, obviously, yeah, Australians love auctions. We want to sell them on the day, don't we? We all get excited. This morning at the dog park, there was someone talking to me about auctions. I heard another person talking about it. I got my coffee. It's all about auctions. Yeah. So it is a question that everyone wonders what goes on. Look, it's all action after that. So when we pass a property in, it's not on a whim. It's a strategy. It's part of the process really at the moment. Well, it's because you didn't get enough money. Well, we're always after the most money. <laughs> <laughs> and you're always after the least, you know, to pay the least. Yeah, yeah. the way it works, isn't it? So look, it, what happens is we've prepped the owner um, that it may well pass in. If it does, it may pass in on no bids, it may pass in on a highest bid, or it may pass in on a vendor bid. Depending on how it passes in, there's a strategy to that, to go back to the market. So what you don't see is immediately when uh, we've signed off, the agent, myself, we're going directly to those registered parties and talking to them about price and where that, I guess, where they're bottom line is or top line is, so to speak. We're also talking to, and I'd love to hear your take on this, Veronica, um, the interested parties who may actually love the property who didn't register. There's a lot of people who, you know, w are watching and waiting. I'm using that term a lot at the moment. Mm. Watching and waiting. They love the property. They're there to buy it, but they don't want to register. So and I feel like people are kind of waiting for it to pass in. Then, they, then they're ready to really have that property discussion. Do you, why do you think, um, Paul, that they're not registering if they've got finance and, and are ready to purchase? Well, I'd love to hear opi your opinion. <laughs> my, my thought is that they love the idea that they're only going to get the right price when it's part, once it's passed in. Right. Everyone, to, from my point of view, is afraid to make the wrong decision as opposed to make the right decision. So if it's the right home, you buy it. It ticks mm. the boxes. In their head, they know that. Mm. But they don't want to be that person to put their hand up and then find out or feel they paid too much. They feel like they only get that genuine price maybe afterwards at the moment. Veronica, yeah, would you what ever you advise think? someone to do that? Would you ever say, look, don't register, but you'll probably get it if it's passed in? Is no, that that, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a really good example of flawed Why thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it is a really good example of flawed thinking, and flawed thinking is really what drives most buyers. Yeah. Um, you know, we are driven by our subconscious minds most of the time, and we, and we don't want to feel like we're stupid. We don't want to feel dumb. And people feel in a, in a slowing market that, well, I'd be, look pretty dumb if I go and bid because, look, I've read the headlines and the headlines mm. are saying it's mm. got more to go. I'd be pretty dumb. I'd look dumb and I don't necessarily want to put myself in a public arena and look dumb. And so there's all Jake of that. and I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but you do it yeah. more often than so. <laughs> you do it well. <laughs> and here we all are. Yeah. <laughs> do you think, though, it's the different reasoning why those people are buying? Perhaps an investor is going to be looking at the market very differently. If they're looking at the, to get in and make money off this as, as their business, then they're going to be saying, is it a good time now and how long will I keep it for before the market comes back, all of those sort of things. If you're buying for your primary residence, it's a different motivation. Yeah, and look, I think too that, that people get so head up on buying at the right time. And certainly if it's your home, it has to be when it's right for you to buy a home. Now, if the market's falling off a cliff and you are in an area where you are going to be able to pick it up in six, 12 months' time or whatever for a lot less than today, well, then you've got to wonder why you're buying in that area in the first place because mm. that's not a particularly robust area. And, and I do believe your own home needs to be considered as an investment. Mm. So, but if you are buying in you know, one of the areas that we deal with, with, for instance, the inner ring of, of Sydney, I mean, these are areas where quality property does well regardless of market conditions. I was at an auction last week in Lane Cove where there were 12 registered bidders, six of whom bid, and the property went way over reserve. Now, that was like boom conditions. Mm. Why? It's because the property is scarce. That's the sort of property people will fight over because there's not a lot of them around. They don't often come on the market, and it was a perfectly price positioned in terms of right bang in the middle where the lots of buyers are at and finance and ready to go. Mm. And yet that same day lots passed in. And so why is that? And that is because currently when there's you know, enough supply and not enough buyers, then they don't need to fight for garbage 
You know, they don't need to fight for something on a main road. Whereas in the rising market, when everyone's panicking, yeah. they'll, yep. they'll bid for something on a main road. And often at auction, you must have looked at some auctions in, in you know, in the height of the boom and thought, you idiots. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I would never do that. <laughs> They're always making Please right decisions you when they're purchasing. Yes. I think we have to remember that at the moment, you know, if there's a thousand, you know, auctions on a Saturday, 500 homes are finding new families to love them. Yeah, of course. So, you know, we do need to remember that. It's still, like that property you described, it's happening. Last weekend, I think we had it on the show, Elizabeth mm. Bay 1, it's a garden apartment in Elizabeth yep. Bay. There's not that many Scarcity. of them. Scarcity. Mm. It's yes. sold. Mm. In the afternoon, out west, I had one with nine registered bidders. Now, the auction took an hour. We made the decision to sell it on the floor. It was the last auction of the day. We had the time. And, of course, we got it, well, we got it sold. In other circumstances, other agents might have chosen to pass it in. We kept it going and we sold it. All right, we're going to so. take a look at the ones from last weekend yeah. that, that we saw not go so well. Um, 50 Bell Street in Hawthorne. Um, that, that was an auction that, it was quite a slow auction, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a slow auction and we we're trying to get people over the line. But, um, you know, it's disappointing to see, you know, that one not get over the line. This is a, a blue chip suburb. Hawthorne yeah. is, you know, very well located in Melbourne. And it was a great house. It was, a, um, you know, a lovely freestanding home. Um, it sold for 1.4 still on the day. Um, it, I think, can you remember what bidding got to on that one, James? I, no, I can't. One? I, I think didn't, it was about I, one point. It, the price guide was up to about 1.3. So it yeah. actually went over the price guide, but on the during bidding last Saturday. They were just hanging out for that a little bit more. It had room to extend on the side. You can see down the depth mm. of that home there. And so there was scope to, to, to you know, improve it. Really well styled, well presented. But, you know, a, a, an older home, um, the kitchen had been updated as well. So why would that be? It did sell on the 1st of December, which was the day it was passed in. Um, what do you think happened after the auction? So I'm guessing that what happened after... I mean, at the end of the day, what the auctioneer and the agent want to do is get those buyers there with a pulse, a checkbook, and the willingness to buy the property, mm. and they are there to do a deal. And so a skilled agent is going to see that opportunity, and they're not going to let that buyer leave without actually closing a deal. And so that's part of the whole auction process is to achieve that. And so, you know, I think when you first walked in before we were on air, you said, well, it's part of a process. An auction might run for 15 minutes, it might run for an hour, depending mm -hmm. on, on what happens. Mm -hmm. But that's only one part of the whole process. The whole process is the, the campaign leading up to that, mm -hmm. the agent's communication with the owner in terms of their expectations, yeah. communication with all of those buyers. The buyers have got to get themselves ready, have done all their due diligence and have their finance actually ready. And a lot of reason why people might turn up at auction without bidding is that they actually aren't financed, particularly in the current market. And then it's like, well, let's get everyone in a room or at the property on the day that are actually ready to buy it mm. and let's work with them and let's bring it to we're, a head. We're seeing that a lot more, Paul, on the show now. We're watching, you know, we watch so many auctions each yeah. week and we live and breathe it and everyone watches the show for that. So we're seeing the agents, but also you being the auctioneer, mm. a lot more conversation, a lot more activity, a lot more going through. When you turn up at the auction, are you finding that you're creating creating that relationship at the beginning before the auction starts with the vendor oh. in this case so that you already can gauge because the agent's telling you so much information too. Yeah, we they? get all the information from the agents during the week throughout the campaign. We get there, probably spoken to the owner throughout the week mm -hmm. in person or on the phone. Again, that conversation occurs. We're getting an idea. We've got their reserve. Um, what, but what we do out there, and we're going out there, and the agent, myself, we're going out there to get the market's very best price on that day. So we go out there, work for every single dollar. I mean, I love what I do, passionate mm. about it, and that's what we're doing. Now, if it doesn't sell, for all those reasons we've just mentioned, then, yeah, we're right. We're going to try and get it done there and then. We've got the people in a room, whether they're registered or not. Mm. Let's take a look at um, Albion now. This was 33 Lever Street in Albion in Brisbane last weekend. I mean, it was a red-hot property, absolutely beautiful. We had it on the program. It look was, at it. <laughs> it, was, it was stunning. It was you couldn't do anything more. Raised and moved to one side of the block. And yeah. The view was crazy. It had a pool underneath as well, which was just perfect for entertaining. And the turnout for this was great as it well. It was, but watching the auctioneer, you kind of felt like he wasn't even trying. He sort of <laughs> he passed it in really quickly. And as it happened, they had a, another buyer on the phone who'd made an offer that was higher than what they were getting at the auction and this one sold like within sort of 30 seconds of them saying it was passed in they were like right it's gone to this other 
bit who wasn't bidding <laughs> under auction conditions but had had made them a good offer. Um, do you ever not try in an auction, Paul? Do you ever sort of go, you know what? No, I can say not trying is not a strategy, <laughs> unless you're Nick Kyrgios maybe. But no, absolutely not. In that situation, if you feel like they're not trying, they might have been told by their agent to wrap it up. Just get out there. Let's move to that negotiations. They may yeah. be well aware that they weren't going to get that bid and they wanted to get into that next phase, an important yeah. phase at the moment of auction. We're mm. passing in and we're going into to those discussions you know, so is it just yeah. theatre at that point? Like, why proceed with, with the auction? Well, no, we're always going to stand up there. I stand up there, we showcase the property. Yeah. We, we talk yeah. about the campaign. We still need to get up there and create, well, whether it be a fear of loss or just letting people know that we have had we have had that interest. <laughs> it may not be here right now. Whether it be the fear don't, of loss. Don't, of course it's the fear of loss. Don't, it's hilarious. Don't make the mistake of lack of bidders as lack of interest. Oh, yes. yes. And, but the thing is, it is true, because we're seeing these people who are turning up who might be subject to terms, the finance, who yeah. actually... They're so thankful it passed in they can get it on Monday. And that's where that competition then... <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got another afterwards. example of that, actually. 4 7th Avenue in Ascot can I, Park. Can I ask you a question? Mm. Yes. So, OK, in New South Wales, mm -hmm. right, do you actually have to hold the auction? So we're there at auction day, yep. you get there, you're there, the agent's there, the buyer's there, one buyer, maybe on the phone, whatever. Yep. It's quite clear there's only one buyer. Yep. The agent's actually pre-negotiated a deal really with that buyer, which yep. often happens. Yep. Yep. Um, and it's like, why bother going through the charade? Only one person's registered. There's all, they've already commenced conversation. Yep. Why go through all this charade of pretending there's an auction all the rest of it? Let's just cut to the chase, go straight to the negotiation. Yeah. Do you have to actually, as an auctioneer, do you have to actually get up there and pretend no. and then you thought, you know, pass up. it in? And that, Because you've got till midnight on the day of yeah, auction yeah. to negotiate, haven't you, yeah, under, auction under auction conditions? Yeah. conditions the auction, con auction yeah. contract. For New South Wales, yeah? Yes, for New South Wales. Mm. No, we don't have to stand up there and call it. Mm. Like, we like to give as much information as we can yep. to yourselves, to everybody. Um, so in that situation, we might be very upfront with that person. They're aware of it. It's like we're here to get a deal done and we start the negotiations. Of course, as an auctioneer, we love to have that conversation with them on the side and then say, well, let's come out here and let's sell it on yep. the floor mm. with them fully aware of where their bid's going to be. Mm. And that's always lovely if we can drop the hammer. It's so much more fun for us. And it's more fun for us. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be like that. No. no. All right, so if we can steer it back now to Ascot Park in Adelaide. This is one that was um, that was passed in last weekend. The price guide was four forty on this. The bidding got to no, sorry, price guide four eighty. Yeah. The bidding got to about four twenty. Yeah, four twenty. And um, they they just couldn't lift it above that. It then sold for five twenty one by about Tuesday. Uh, so you know above the guide, massively above. And you know the Adelaide guides are normally pretty accurate. They normally sort of are, you know, what they say they're going to be. Uh, so to have got that huge uplift in just a couple of days, how would the auction have helped force it to that point? Well, the auction always gives us the deadline. So it's that propensity to action. So like Veronica said at the beginning, it's an auction campaign. So you can sell a property pre, on auction day and post. So we're getting everybody there to the table and a little bit like kids in a swimming pool, the water's going everywhere. Post that auction, it's, that auction's a bit of a mutual learning experience mm. for the buyers and the owner. And then that water settles when you get the kids out. <laughs> and that can be that natural price. And then people are talking. Another thing is why they might have got more there is it could be the fact that someone is emotional about the property. Mm. They love it. They want it. And the owner can always decide to pull the property. Well, I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to decide to rent it out. It's like, well, hold on. The, the buyer is like, well, I do want this. Right. I may not have competition, but my competition, my ultimate competition is always the owner. Mm. Also, so. you can get competition after auction. Mm. And I think that's what people forget. And so auction conditions, you know, buyers say they hate auctions, but sometimes the auction actually is in the buyer's favour because that's a done deal if it's actually done on, you know, during the auction mm. when the hammer falls. Mm. Whereas you negotiate afterwards, you actually don't have the right, the only right to negotiate. You think you mm. do, that you've got a courtesy that's been afforded to you. And technically it's the first right of refusal at the reserve price. So, you know, they're very rarely actually still at the reserve price under those circumstances but I've seen it and I've been certainly as, a, as not so much as a buyer's actually not as a buyer's agent I don't think ever but certainly when I was a selling agent we often had people fighting it out after the auction which meant that there's no more transparency for a buyer. Yeah mm. it becomes a lot more opaque yep. post auction doesn't yes. it? Um, South Yarra is another example from last weekend this was on Williams Road it was um, a really nice townhouse it was quite unusual mm. it was stone's throw from from all the good stuff in um, in South Yarra and the bidding was very lacklustre on this one it was really Really slow. Uh, Grant Wallace from Hocking Stewart was really trying to eke out every dollar he could, and, and it just wasn't moving. It sort of got to about nine 
960. 960, I think, um, on the day. The guide was 1 to 1.1, and then post auction, still on the same day, it sold for 1015. It's a good so floor plan. It had a couple of bedrooms upstairs and one downstairs, so it had an interesting dynamic for, you know, like share accommodation or, 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 or students renting it, if you liked. Um, and really well presented, if, if, if a little bit tired, uh, particularly the kitchen. But again, he was the agent and auctioneer, so would he have had a fair idea that, that he was going to get this price just not necessarily while the TV cameras were rolling? He'd have a fair idea, but something we have to remember, and that's the beauty of auction, we often don't know. In the previous mm. market, we might have expected four registered bidders, we'd get eight. It might be the opposite now. Mm. So we can't always make assumptions. We always are letting our owners know this is what we expect, but you never know. So it's always of course wise to run the auction um, for all those reasons to mm. bring everybody to the table so yeah but for all those reasons we're talking about that negotiation can be a fruitful one post the auction where people actually give a little bit more information um, just to remind people Kennedy. watching now, we've got you on one side, which is basically, you know, you to run an auction, yep. very professionally, very and entertainingly. And to represent the vendor. And to represent the yep. vendor. And then we've got um, Veronica on the other side, basically trying to get the best price for her, her client, um, the, the purchaser. But ultimately, you are both trying to get a household. So it, it is the goal. Yep. Do you find, as the uh, auctioneer, that you're doing more negotiation with people like Veronica buyers, agents, that because people are scared of dealing with the market themselves, that they're thinking it's just too unpredictable now? So you meaning uh, I'm negotiating more with buyer's agents yes, or buyer's in yes, general? Yes, yeah, buyer's agent. Oh, look, buyer's agents, you know, are actually great to work with. Yeah. So in the majority of cases that we're there, it's a respectful relationship, we give as much information as we can, obviously I'm working for the owner, yes. we're trying to get sure. every dollar, you're working for yours. Yeah. So actually I'll be fascinated to know, do you feel, if you make a purchase for your client, do you feel like you give more perceived value if you put, bought it pre on the auction day or post? Well, I, I take it away from that and I say we need to be strategic about how we negotiate. And mm. so we actually look at a lot of markers along the way to say what is the best strategy to go forward. Is this a situation when we really should make an offer prior? Are the conditions right for that? And yeah. there have to be a lot of conditions in place for us to do that. Is it a con and we never do it out of fear. Whereas a lot of people make a pre-auction offer purely out of fear of competition, and that is the wrong reason to do it. Um, and, and we make a deliberate decision at times to go to auction. Certainly in, in the current market, we are much more likely to go to auction and be ready to buy at auction, take advantage of mm. that pressure. Um, and there are other times when it's a deliberate decision to, you know, this thing is going to pass in. You know, the vend vendor's expectations are way too high, or we have a defensive type of agent mm. who is not actually prepared to engage in, in constructive conversations. So it's going to pass in and we will watch that and we will deliberately yeah. um, approach it in that way so is yeah, that because for, is that because yeah. Veronica you think sometimes pre-auction bid you might be just showing the cards too early to well a pre-auction bid needs certain conditions in order to to be the right thing to do and the first thing is we have to be convinced that we are, have a better chance of getting it at a, at a better price for our client by doing it that way than by going to auction mm. and so therefore it needs to be a competitive and it also needs to be at the point in the campaign where we've allowed the owner and the agent to you know feel like they've tested the market and get a sense of price and where buyers are at we've priced it and we think you know what that thing could go to you know beyond that yep. price if it goes to auction and we feel that we can get it within a, a, a reasonable range and it looks like good value compared to what's been quoted so there's but you also have to have an agent that is capable of getting that sort of deal together some of them aren't yeah <laughs> Yeah, skill of the agent. I'd mm. like to say in our organisation, all the skills of our agents are phenomenal. Yep. Um, and there's <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yeah, we're all it, friends here. Let's just remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100. percent And we are seeing the professionalism of agents, and, and you rightly say that um, um, doing their job more. We're seeing a lot more on the ground negotiation. Where whereas you know, so I think when the market was amazing, you could just buy a knockdown <laughs> like a, a dump, and the agent really didn't have to do a lot of work. Whereas now it's coming back to the times of really. Being good at your job yeah. and quality and knowing the game and where you guys negotiate is you're dealing with somebody you both know all of the rules of the game yeah. whereas sometimes mr and mrs brown this this vendor by themselves uh, sorry purchaser by themselves mm. maybe doesn't yeah isn't as equipped to understand right, the guys, game. We, we could talk about oh, this could. all day but we're Clearly. not allowed to unfortunately <laughs> um, we've got to take a break and we've got a live auction coming up um paul Mink, thanks so much Absolutely. for your thank input you. there thank you so great much. to have you with us on it. I feel like I've made, made it in my career. Yeah, <laughs> no worries. We'll gladly have you Thanks back, mate. It's always suit. good to hear yeah. both sides of the, of, the, of the coin, you know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, buyers amongst you, without further ado, number 27, George Street, here in Oakley. 
10% deposit upon signing these documents in a few moments' time. Flexible settlement option for you, 30 or 60 days. Buyers, I can kick things off for you, or we can give you that opportunity first of all. What do we see for a fair bid or offer for number 27 George Street in Oakley? In your hands, buyers, start me where you will. Be original, get a bid going nice and quick. Fair bit of offer, buyers, here to get the property sold, need to hear from you, I can start things off. 650 with this gentleman here. 650, 660, 660, we're away now at 660, 10 the reply, sir, at 660 to bid now. At 660, you got us going. 660, bids here now at $660,000 now, 10 if you like to go, at 660. At 660, the bid if you're here to buy it, ladies and gentlemen, now's the time to put your hand in the air at 660. Two of you in it now at $660,000 now. At 660, and 10 if you like to go at 600, and 60 the bid now at $660,000. At 660, 670, can we say at 660? At $660,000, once in a $660,000, twice in a $660,000. Third and final call now at $660,000, all done out and finished then buyers, at $660,000. Back for 10 with our start if you like, sir, at $660,000. It's a good question. We won't be placing a vendor bid, we'll just treat with the highest bidder. We're not on the, we're not on the market. At $660,000, put yourself in the box seat with $670,000. Don't need to, don't want to, no worries. 660 in control here at $660,000. At 660, the bid now buys at $660,000. 660. 660, the bid here now at 660. 10 if you like to go now, ladies and gentlemen, $660,000. Won't be placing a vendor bid, folks. We'll treat with the highest bidder at $660,000. All done out and finished then at 660. 680. Welcome back, sir. Great bid at 680. Play the same game, sir. Make it, six, make it seven. 680, 690. Welcome back at 690 now at $690,000. At 690 and seven's a reply at seven now, 710 can we say. At seven the bid now and 10 are you like at $700,000. Plenty of value left here. At 700,000 the bid now at seven. At seven, a newer property across the road, only recently passed in the market in the early mid eights, I understand, Josh. At $700,000. At seven, the bid. It's on a bigger parcel of land. Yes, it's got one less bedroom. At $700,000. Back in for 10, can we say at seven? At $700,000. First time then at $700,000. Twice then at $700,000. Take your five, sir, at 705. Opportunity for you also, sir, at five. 710 now, it's 710,000 the bid now, it's 710. At 710,000 the bid now, it's 710,000 dollars. At 710,000, fairly bid and offered now on the market. We are selling, playing the keeps now at 710,000 dollars. At 710, don't wait for a half time break on the market, it will be sold. Bids in now at 7, 715 now, welcome. At 715,000 dollars now, at 715. At 715,000, three of you in it now, at 715. 20? 715, sir? 715, gentlemen, 715, 20, can we say from you, at 715,000 dollars? Sell your car, walk to the station, your money's better invested here. 715,000, can we say five from you? At $715,000, 720, welcome back with our starter at $720,000 now. At $720,000, the bid now at $720,000. At $720,000, five's a fine, keep on going at $720,000, five can we say? At $720,000 now. At $720,000, you're never going to buy it on one bid, guys, how about one more? <laughs> Oh, that's all right. You've got, to, you've got to be in it to win it, don't you? At 720,000 now. Love to see you back. Can we say 725? Yes, that's fine. 725? No, that's not fine. No, <laughs> $720,000 now at 720, playing for keeps. At $720,000 now at 720. On the market and selling buyers, make no mistake, at 720. Don't wait for us to go inside. It will be sold, if nothing further. At 726, 726. How about 736, sir? 726, bids are here now. Quick console at 726,000. Your bid here. That's $726,000. 726. 
How about 730? 730? 730 now. Helps with my mass contract time. $730,000 now. Had 730, gentlemen, ma'am, give them a bit of a nudge along. $730,000, take control. Tell them not to miss out. 730 the bid. Had 730. It's a fair syndicate over there, guys. All just chuck in another thousand. We'll make it five. Seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars on the market and selling. Haven't forgotten about you here. Had seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars with our starter at seven hundred and thirty. Come to buy the property. Looks like he will. Had seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars. First time then at seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Twice then at seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Third and final call. All done. All silent. Great property, Heart of Oakley, don't miss it at 730. Don't walk away lightly. At 730, can we tempt you back for one? Sure. Yeah, gee, you're all very sure, aren't you? 730, you're definitely done here, guys. I bought you a coffee and everything. How about one more? No? Next time. Fantastic. Don't pay me back. Come to the next auction and bid again. At $730,000. At $730,000, we'll call it down three times and sell. At $730,000. First time then at $730,000. Twice at $730,000. Third and final call. You all done. All silent. At $730,000, we are selling, selling and sold. Congratulations. Well done. Bidding card if I can, though, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate you bid. $1.8 million. Right hand side has it. And how about we call the next bid maybe $50,000 on top to make it $18.50. But it's right hand side at $1.8 million. Again, we'd welcome $50,000 now to make it $1,850,000. But one point eight's the current bid. Right hand side once at a million eight hundred thousand twice. Again, we'd look to call the next bid $18.50 now at one million eight hundred thousand. First, second, third, all done. Any better offer? on $1.8 million. Quickly, are we bidding? And 50, thank you, right in front, sir. Can we say 50 as well to make it 1.9, sir? 18.50 now, left-hand side. Again, sir, we'd welcome 1.9 million to make the next bid, but gentlemen, holds it right in front. 18.50 once at 1850,000 twice. Sir, is it 50 on top to go straight to 1.9 here, sir? In front has it against your bid. First, second, third, all done. Any advance on 1,850,000. dollars Sir, is it 1.9 million? To call the next offer, may we say 50, sir? Thank you, 1.9. And, sir, 50 as well to make it 19.50 and 19.50. And, sir, 50 on top to go straight to 2 million now, sir. 19.50 is the bid just here at 1,950,000. I'd welcome 50 here, sir, to court $2 million. But bids here set in front. 1,950,000 once at 1950 twice, sir. May we say 2 million? Can we call it 2 million, sir? Bids here, left hand side. Our instructions are the same. Once. Twice, third all done. Any better offer on one million nine fifty thousand dollars? Quickly, are we bidding, gentlemen? Can we say maybe two million? In front has the bid, sir. Or what about twenty-five? Can we say twenty-five, sir? I'll call it nineteen seventy-five. Nineteen fifty is the offer. I'll take twenty-five if you like, sir. To call it seventy-five thousand. But again, if you are back from a development point of view. Great parcel of land, wide frontage, potential development site. This is good buying here. In front has the bid once at 1,950,000 twice. Well, our instructions are the same, sir. If you'd like to buy it, now's your best chance. I'll just see your bidding card if I can, gentlemen. And 1975, thank you very much. And, sir, 50 on top again. And 2 million, okay. 2 million dollars has it, sir. Can we say 25 again? So 2 million is the current bid just in front. I'd welcome 25, sir. To call it two and twenty-five thousand. In front has it though against your bid, sir, and against your left hand side of two million dollars once, bid two million dollars twice, third all done. Any better offer on two million dollars? Here's the bid right in front, sir. We absolutely sure. Twenty, sir, twenty-five. Sorry. Fifty. So two million fifty thousand, sir. Can we say twenty again? To make it seventy thousand, two million fifty or ten, sir. Have it a court maybe sixty thousand. Two million fifty thousand is just in front, and that's the gentleman's offer. John bids here at two and fifty thousand dollars. I'll take ten if you like, sir. To court sixty thousand. It's good value at that sort of price point. Two and fifty thousand, sir. Is it ten on top to make it sixty thousand? Once bid two million fifty thousand twice. Third time before it goes, sir. Sixty. Thank you. You bid up, sir. Two point one. 2.1 and 10, sir. 
So 2.1's a bid right here at 2,100. May we say 10 on top, sir, to make it 110. 2.1's the current offer, and John, our instructions are the same, I presume. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the great news is it's here for sale. It's going to be sold. 2.1's in front. Sir, we absolutely certain. Can we say 10 on top before we sell it, gentlemen? Are we absolutely sure? It will be sold. We're very close to the train station. You've got the beach just down the road. This is good vying here. 2-1, current bid. Once, sir. Absolutely sure. I appreciate you bidding. Thank you, gentlemen. Twice. At $2,100,000, will be sold. Can we say 1000 Can we say 1000 I appreciate you bidding. Well, sir, if we can't increase, you'll be the proud new owner of this quality parcel of land. So, buyers, I think we've had ample time now. We're going to call it three times. If you're back today to own it, now's your last chance to do so because it will be sold. Two million, one hundred thousand, once. At 2.1 million, twice. Third final, all done. Any better offer on two million, one hundred thousand dollars. Quickly, are we bidding? Sir, all done. Sure, gentlemen. John, happy? All done. So, congratulations, sir. That's what we like. Oh, yeah, some pretty swift action there by auctioneer Adrian, uh, oh, sorry, Andrew Cooley. Um, great job. They said it would go for about two, and there it is, 2.1. And um, Congratulations. Kids, get up. You just bought a house. Yeah, no messing about there. Merry Christmas. Oh, look. She's, oh, she's excited. She's excited. How cute. We got a house. Can we put a bow on it? Um, Two million one hundred. It started off at one point eight, which was already pretty realistic. The guide that we had from uh, agent John Bassett was uh, around the two million dollar figure. Um, look, great location and subject to council approval. That block, um, depending, of course, on the width, etc., and access. But it's a pretty flat block. Could be a duplex site. So there's lots of development potential there. But yeah. um, well, it's a shame to lose that I character, agree. that beautiful original home. And I agree. So if they put in duplexes make them nice ones <laughs> yeah character filled but you know quite not a lot of bids in it there was probably you know seven bids or something quite strong bids but got it up there what two million one hundred thousand well done yeah for, for a home that was you know hand built by the grandfather 70 years ago been held in the same family uh, for all this time and um, really they've done not much to it they've no. just enjoyed and you can it see as the their beach house by the looks of things you can see that shot there's development on either side you know yeah. some the houses have changed put in a pool all of those things um, to change its oh, life you can't stop progress no you can't but look at that kitchen <laughs> Yep, yep, get the vertical grill out and get the lamb chops on. Um, roll the... Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, Just need a hill's hoist in the backyard I there. I wonder so. why there isn't one. Um, yeah, a great result here on auction. Now we're having a much better day of it, which is a relief. Because, it is you know, relief. last Saturday, was a, it was a bit deflating, wasn't yeah, it? We it had was five out of six bit passing of a market. last week. But uh, this week, it's, it's a much rosier picture. So that's the great thing about auctions. You never know which way they're going to go. That's right.